NDR Info. Nachtclub. Und am Mikrofon ist immer noch Paul Baskerville. In der zweiten Stunde gibt es, wie gesagt, das Interview mit Marina and the Diamonds. Ich hatte ein leichtes, so technisches Problem mit meinem Mikrofon während des Interviews mit Marina. Aber ansonsten lief alles gut. Und für das Gespräch war ganz ergiebig. Nur meine Stimme klingt nicht so toll, aber das ist relativ egal. Interessant ist vor allem die Tatsache, dass Marina total unbekannt war, als ich sie im März 2009 zum ersten Mal vorstellte. Und sie war immer noch ziemlich unbekannt, als ich das erste Interview Anfang des Jahres 2010 gemacht habe. Und nun ist sie inzwischen ziemlich prominent. Sowas kann passieren, auch wenn es bei 99 Prozent der Bands, die ich sonst vorstelle, nicht passiert. Und sie kommt gleich zu Wort. Und hier ist jetzt erstmal die akustische Version von Hollywood. Hello. Yeah, looking very well. Thank you. <laughs> Have you had a holiday yet? Have you just been working solidly? Um, yeah, I had like two weeks off in August because the industry shuts down a bit. So... I was with my mum for that. But, yeah, I'm feeling good. I, I mean, I love working and touring, so... Did you go to Benidorm then or something? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I did not go to Benidorm. I suppose you're so prominent now, you can't really go to any places, just take a walk down the beach without being recognised. Actually, I, I can everywhere. It's, say, if I'm not like this, or if I don't walk down the street wrapped in an American flag with red lipstick on, I don't get recognised. Right. Because I, I find that the worse I look, the more people don't recognise me. Well, so it's a bit like people don't recognise me if I've got my specs on. You know, it's the same sort of thing. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I take your point there, yeah. But, uh, so uh, you obviously still think quite relaxed about things and your life hasn't spun out of control yet. Everything's, you're keeping everything in check, do you feel? No, I, I, think, um, I think it was kind of a blessing that this happened uh, a bit later on i.e. when I was 22, not when I was 16, because I'm a fairly grounded person and I have quite a grip on reality. So um, for me, you know, it's a, it's a very steady climb onwards and um, I don't really think about anything except for music, to be honest. So, you know, I'm not like a celebi person. If I was, then I probably would have um, a lot... A lot to, more changes in my life, but I don't, except for that I'm traveling constantly. That's the only big change that's happened to me. Marina meint, sie hat das ganze Jahr bis auf zwei Wochen durchgearbeitet. Sie war zwei Wochen im August mit ihrer Mutter im Urlaub, hat aber das Gefühl, ihr Leben noch im Griff zu haben. Sie ist aber froh, dass sie den Erfolg mit 22 und nicht mit 18 bekommen hat, weil sie nun erwachsen genug ist, um damit gut umzugehen. Sie glaubt, dass sie bisher ziemlich bodenständig geblieben ist. Of course, I mean, you've come a long way now, and most people seem to have kind of understood what you're about, and most people seem to appreciate it. But, I mean, obviously, you know, you can't win over everybody. And it's like a colleague of mine, he was saying to me, you know, what's all this about Marina the Times? I don't really get it, you know, because he's kind of listens to all this indie music and all this stuff, and he knows that I listen to indie music normally. And I said, well, you know, can you just sum it up? So I said, well, how do I sum it up? Um, I said, well, it's, she's quite so spectacular melodically i think you know that's what it's down to and that's what kind of i think kind of grabs your attention at the end of the day oh it's very nice um no i didn't at all i, <laughs> I think but i do love melody and i do appreciate a good melody um and that's what a lot of pop is lacking i think at the moment it seems like more dumbing it down even further into a really simplistic generic popular melody so that people literally don't have to um make any effort to listen to a song it just goes in <laughs> so i really appreciate that um i th i think it's an interesting comment that you make about your friends because you can't please everyone but i seem in a funny position in the industry because i'm too pop for most indie people and too indie for most pop listeners which is a good and bad place to be because it allows you a lot of growth um But for myself, all I can say is that, um, as you know, I came up as, really, as a DIY musician. I was doing everything by myself, and I'm very much a self-made artist. And I think the people who think, uh, the critics who think I'm too pop, they come and see me live and they get it, because they realize I'm a musician. And uh, I, I probably, my ideals are probably much more indie and, like, punk than pop will ever be because I, I hate conformity and I hate the restrictions of the pop world, especially on females. So um, 
you know, it takes, I think it takes two or three albums for people to start to understand you as an artist. So you're essentially quite a subversive artist, really? Yes, right. definitely. Okay. When we met last time, you did actually say that uh, you felt you wanted to be a mainstream star. But um, it seems to, to me that there is something quite naturally quirky about you in a way, which is never going to be 100% mainstream if you want it to be. Yeah. You know. Well, I, I think I, I've realised that the, I'm always so defensive about it because I don't fit mainstream. And so I am one of those artists filled with a few contradictions, which is that I want to be massive, but um, I want to do it on my own terms. And I will, and you can do it, but... You know, you also have to produce something so brilliant that even if it's not palatable to the pop ear, it becomes pop music eventually. Mm. And uh, I suppose the first album was, is a combination of both worlds. It's, it's taking the risk to do something that's 100% one thing instead of 50-50. Marina meint, sie liebt Melodien über alles, sie beschwert sich darüber, dass es so viel billige Popmusik gibt, die keine Herausforderung für den Hörer ist. Sie weiß, dass nicht alle Leute sie mögen. Sie sei für die meisten Indie-Menschen zu poppig und zu Indie für die meisten Pop-Fans. Und das hat Vor- und Nachteile, sagt sie. Sie kann sich wenigstens natürlich entwickeln, weil sie nirgendwo wirklich hingehört. Sie war am Anfang eine absolute Indie-Musikerin, sie macht alles selbst, also ist sie ein self-made man. Und wenn die Kritiker, die sie für zu poppig halten, sie live sehen, dann begreifen sie Marine dann doch. Sie erkennen dann doch, dass sie eine echte Musikerin ist. Sie ist von der Attitüde her viel mehr Indie und Punk als Pop, weil sie Angepasstheit hasst. Und sie hasst die Einschränkungen der persönlichen Freiheit der Popwelt, besonders in Bezug auf Frauen. Sie denkt, die Leute werden zwei bis drei Alben brauchen, bis sie Marine richtig verstanden haben. Sie betrachtet sich schon als subversive Künstlerin. Und sie ist schon widersprüchlich, sie will riesengroß werden, aber doch nur zu ihren Bedingungen. Da muss man was Brillantes schaffen, dass es ein Hit wird, obwohl es nicht leicht verdaulich ist, sagt sie. Dann wird es doch eines Tages Pop, obwohl es keine leichte Kost sei. Hier ist die akustische Version von I'm Not a Robot. And of course, I know you talk about MySpace. The, you've still got Daniel Johnson on your profile as, as, as mm -hmm. one of your top friends. He's not really your best friend, is he? Presumably. No, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I think even with MySpace, even though it's kind of died to death, it's still important to, to show who you support and who you, you know, because that's representative of your ideals and who you relate with as an artist. So I've got Daniel. Um, I have the distillers. I have a wonderful girl called Claire Maguire. I don't know if you've heard of yes, her. Yeah, She's yeah. fantastic and a really good friend. Um, now, I think with yeah. the Daniel Johnson thing, so it's not, not an obvious connection to make. I mean, you, you certainly don't bear so much physical resemblance to Daniel Johnson. No. <laughs> yeah, but, but musically, it's um, the fact that, uh, I mean, w the way you started, like your early demos, the stuff you posted, it was kind of like just very kind of basic and almost in a positive sense, kind of childlike. I'm not saying you're childlike, yeah. you know what I mean? No, I know what you mean. I know yeah. what you mean. It, and it was, I think it's more embracing imperfection. That's what I love about him. Whereas Madonna, the other extreme and the other idol is, well, she's the absolute opposite of that. And I am something of both, I suppose. I, idealistically. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, but with Daniel Johnson, it's not like a, uh, you don't really know him in, for real. And uh, no, you couldn't imagine collaborating him with him. Because you've been collaborating with You have actually met him once. Yeah, okay. I have. How did he react to you then? Um, well, I think he quite likes girls. So he was like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh, okay. He was fine. Um, no, I don't think I could collaborate with him. But very interested in one day, and you'll remember this, interview when I actually end up doing it I'm going to take his song Walking the Cow and I'm going to develop it into a pop song because I really want the I really want the masses to find out about him but I know exactly <laughs> how I'm going to do it I kind of okay. want it to be quite a dance like almost like really heavy dance record so okay. we'll see but I, right. I definitely want to do something with his songs right okay Marina sagt, MySpace ist zwar nicht mehr so angesagt wie früher, aber dennoch ist es wichtig, dass man ein MySpace-Profil nutzt, um Vorbilder und Ideale zu zeigen. Deshalb hat sie Daniel Johnston auf ihrer Seite und Claire Maguire und The Distillers. Und sie hat Daniel Johnston einmal kennengelernt, aber okay, aber sie könnte nicht mit ihm zusammenarbeiten. Aber er ist ihr wichtig, weil er die musikalische Unvollkommenheit darstellt, wie Marina es früher mal war. Und er zeigt, wie sowas trotzdem wertvoll sein kann. 
auch wenn es dilettantisch ist. Andererseits war Madonna für sie früh ein Vorbild. Sie ist das Gegenteil von Daniel Johnston, also liegt Marina zwischen Daniel Johnston und Madonna. Und sie möchte gerne das Lied Walking the Cow von Daniel Johnston einmal neu interpretieren, ein Tanzstück draus machen. Here's Daniel Johnston mit Walking the Cow. And of course, I mean, a lot of when it comes down to the way people define things, so much has to do with production, doesn't it? Yeah. And like the production on, on the album, in some, well, in some cases, like songs like Champagne was quite blatantly yeah. kind of very, very produced. Some people kind of overproduced. I mean, could you imagine actually uh, scaling it down at all? I mean, would that be of interest to you, do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, it's almost like for the second record, I, I was so tempted to do an absolutely backwards record, which is very stripped, but almost just piano based but that's it's too easy for me it's not time for me to do that yet so um i'm doing something else but i can definitely imagine that even bringing in like electric guitar and, and really stripping it back um so yes definitely so you might turn into pj harvey <laughs> i don't know i think i think i'm too uniform for that i do <laughs> okay. i do like neat songs <laughs> yeah okay and i mean do you feel that's a bit apprehensive about the next album i mean because of the obviously no no okay. no because i i didn't stop writing after the first one and i went immediately into um a new direction very naturally which is darker and heavier and um and so but it's hard because still i'm writing songs that could be like 70s folk so i just i don't know i'm like i think i'm just a really best style writer that pulls from everywhere so Maybe we should collaborate with Donovan then. I didn't. Oh God. He's playing tonight, you know. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've got to announce it on stage today. No yeah. way. Yeah, honestly. That's yeah. mad. Yeah. Oh wow. Because uh, on the on this album, I don't think there was only, I think there was only one song which was actually longer than four minutes. Uh, mm. Numb, right? So it was definitely a case of keeping things short and sweet at the time. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, it was quite intricate because some of the songs had so many chords as well, didn't they? And it's kind of yes. Um, and it seemed to me like, and was that deliberate? I mean, did, 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 were you aware of using so, so many calls? Was it just kind of no, a sign of I your thought, youthful ambition? I thought it was normal until my keyboard player was like, Marina, were you on crack when you wrote this? Because <laughs> there were nine chords in this. Uh, and I said, no, it's just I, you know, if you have a, a, a very fast working mind, you, you have to grab onto a lot of things to keep it entertained. And that was the only reason, because I... It was very pleasing to me. Marina kann sich vorstellen, was ganz Schlechtes zu machen. Am liebsten würde sie ein reines Klavier mit Gesang-Album machen. Aber dafür ist es doch noch zu früh in ihrer Karriere, meint sie. Vielleicht später. Sie könnte sich vorstellen, eine E-Gitarre dabei zu haben und musikalisch ziemlich karg zu werden. Aber PJ Harvey ist sie auch nicht. Also Marina steht doch zu sehr auf akkurate Lieder, sagt sie. Sie mag sich keine Sorgen über das neue Album, weil sie durchgehend Lieder komponiert hat. Sie entwickelt sich in eine eher düstere und heavy Richtung, meint sie. Andererseits schreibt sie Songs, die wie siebzige Folk klingen. Und sie sagt, ich bin einfach ein wandlungsfähiger Songschreiber. Und jemand fragte sie vor kurzem, ob sie cracksüchtig sei, nachdem er Lieder von ihr mit neun Akkorden gehört hatte. Ihr Kopf aber arbeitet einfach immer sehr schnell, deshalb braucht sie viele Komponente in einem Lied damit sie es noch spannend finden kann. Hier ist jetzt die Demo-Version von Obsessions. Do you actually feel that you've become more self-assured now as a musician over the last couple of years? Have you actually had time to practice that? You've just been on stage all the time just singing. As a singer, definitely. My, vo my voice has developed, um, I wouldn't say radically, but it really has changed and it's, uh, I've, I've mastered the, the art of dynamics. But musically, probably not. I'm probably worse than when I started. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably carry on not knowing the chords to any, to uh, the names of any chords and pressing what sounds good, etc. But you know, we'll see. Uh, do you actually ever think in in terms in the broader context of like artistic merit when you actually write stuff, or is it just something which is just a stream of consciousness stuff? I mean, do you actually measure it against other things? I was talking to Plan B recently, and he was yeah. sort of saying that there was a certain song which. You know, he was so so proud of because it stood up to another song, which he was already jealous of the songwriter having written it. Ah! That, that that kind of thing, you know. Uh, I mean, do you think in those terms, or do you, are you just in your own little world, not um, drawing comparisons? Um, drawing comparisons to my own work, previous work, or yeah, to previous other people? Work, or stuff you're writing now. No, stuff you're writing now, or or stuff which you've written on the on the Family Jewels album. Do you actually think it? Do you try to measure it against other other people's achievements? Um, no, not to other people's. Um. 
However, you know, I, I, I definitely have the capacity to admire a really well-written song. But I think with me, it's always I, I'm comparing my recent work to old works, you know, so. OK. So you just compare yourself to yourself more than anything? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you just live in your own little world, really. Yeah. I do. I think, actually, isolation is very good because um, it kind of makes me feel crazy to look at what other people are doing and I worry, and, and it's not very good for you. So I like to contain myself. Er gesang sei besser geworden, sagt sie, vor allem dynamischer. Als Musikerin ist sie eher schlechter geworden. Sie hat keine Zeit, Instrumente zu üben. Sie wird wahrscheinlich weiterhin als musikalische Analphabet instinktiv funktionieren. Sie meint, dass sie sich nicht mit anderen Künstlern vergleicht. Sie ist nicht neidisch auf das Songwriting anderer Künstler, sondern sie vergleicht sich nur mit sich selbst. Sich abzukapseln ist eine gute Sache. Sich mit anderen Leuten zu vergleichen ist ungesund, sagt Marina. Sie möchte lieber selbstständig denken können. How are you actually coping with um, all your fans these days? Uh, <laughs> um, because... Pretty well. I haven't, I don't have any problems with them because, I mean, how do you mean coping? As in, have I had any problems or? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, I'm thinking that it's like, I think what, what is quite unusual, I think, which is, is actually quite um, an admirable quality that you have in, in your character to actually you seem to emphasize the importance of having a, some kind of connection to your fans. Um, you know, calling them the diamonds for a start. Mm -hmm. And when you first told me that when I met you, la when I met you last, I thought it sounded a bit silly t to my mind. And mm -hmm. then I realized how it developed. I didn't tell you I thought it was silly, but yeah. I didn't think it was silly. Just for a lot of people think it's a very cutesy thing, and it's, it's well, yeah. actually not. No, no, because it seems to be kind of like, um, at least you're trying, you know, not to be aloof. And yeah. it, may, it may be futile, but at least you're trying to not be. Absolutely, you know and I, I mean? think... Probably as I grow up, it won't seem so silly. But in the beginning, people probably think, oh, she's like a young pop star or whatever, and she's just saying it to have a gimmick. But really, you know, it was because I, I felt like a loner. You know, that's actually what it came from, and I wanted to be part of something. And, you know, through certain periods in my life, I felt very excluded um, just because I wasn't part of a scene or didn't have an image. And... I, I just don't want people to feel like that. I like to make people feel good. And so with the contact with fans, that's because I hate... I can't bear the pretense um, of of kind of... of interaction. I don't like to think that fans uh, communicate with artists, but really it's a label in between them and the artists don't really care or um or even think about it and i'm the opposite of that i really do care and okay. i have a lot of you know get a lot of pleasure from it so and do you not actually find it though in some way a pressure if people kind of think they have some sort of relationship to you which they don't really have i mean they i mean obviously they're going to know you better than you're going to know them and so you can't really guide yeah. them in life as such can you well you know, e each kinda... relationship is what it is and yeah, but there's I... still a kind of hierarchy there isn't there of a sort um, no, I disagree. I don't think there is a hierarchy. I think that maybe a, um, each person might have a different idea. It's all about if they have an illusion of something. Most people will realise that, yeah, I don't know the same about them as they do about me, but that doesn't mean that there's a difference and between us and we can't talk and that I'm not accessible because I meet, I meet as many fans as I can after every single gig. Okay. And... And that's, I've done that all year, so unless things get really crazy and it's impossible on the next tour. But I, I think I'll always be like that. If, if you, you know, if you want to meet someone enough, then you kind of, you do. <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah. But you don't find them to kind of just too um, in awe of you to actually... To no. They, they do behave naturally, do you no, think? No, well, most people do. There are obviously people who are really, like, shaky and, like, crying, but I think that's just because... I mean a lot to them, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that the hierarchy thing is in place, because I don't believe it. Right. And it's only in place, really, if they believe it. And hopefully me doing this means that they eventually won't, and that they just see me as, you know, as I see them. So So what do you do if they're all shaky and crying, then? What do you do then? I don't know. I feel really embarrassed. Right. I don't know what to do. Because in my head, it's like, I'm just... I, I just, I feel like saying to them, please don't be in awe of me because <laughs> it's embarrassing. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, you know, anyone special. So 
Whereas some artists might just be like, oh my God, I love it that everyone's attention is on me. Whereas for me, I just like, I want to make them feel okay. <laughs> Viele Leute dachten, es war nur eine kindische Idee, die Fans der Diamonds zu nennen, sagt Marina. Aber sie möchte eine echte Beziehung zu ihren Fans haben. Sie will nicht, dass das Plattenlabel dazwischen funkt und einen Kontakt zu den Fans verhindert. Sie hat sich früher oft sehr einsam gefühlt, deshalb will sie nicht, dass ihre Fans sich irgendwie ausgeschlossen fühlen. Sie findet, es gäbe keine Hierarchie. Sicher kennt sie die Fans nicht wirklich, was aber nicht heißt, dass sie nicht mit ihnen reden darf. Sie trifft so viele Fans wie möglich nach jedem Konzert und sie glaubt, sie wird immer so sein. Es gibt ein paar Fans, die zittern und weinen, wenn sie Marine treffen. Ihr ist das schon unangenehm. Sie würde ihnen am liebsten sagen, seid nicht so ehrfürchtig, es ist mir doch peinlich, ich bin nichts Besonderes. And here's yet the demo version from Numb. And what is the secret of that innate modesty of yours then? Because on the one hand, oh, you're God. kind of very driven by ambition. Yeah. So that would normally make, make you kind of a vain sort of person, you know, to, that you think you're on a pedestal above other people. Usually, if you're intensely ambitious, that would normally goes hand in hand with feeling in some way superior you know, to other people. I think because, uh, though it probably sounds stupid i feel that uh this road and this journey is bit f is for the greater good and it's not because i want to uh have attention as an artist and that's really genuine and I, i really questioned that like do i want that or do i not do i thrive off it and really i just like the attention on the stage and then to go off but you know I don't know what I'll end up doing in the future in 15 years or what I'll, I'll have done, but I feel that I will do something outside of music that, you know, that will be important. So that's why and I don't know if I am humble. Maybe, maybe I think a lot of people are like this, you know. I think the best, the best musicians and the legends are the people who do treat everybody with respect, with great respect. They're just... They're just personally driven to be the best they can as people. Es klingt vielleicht dumm, meint Marina, aber sie glaubt, dass ihre künstlerische Reise dem Allgemeinwohl dient. Sie tut was Sinnvolles, sie genießt die Aufmerksamkeit auf der Bühne, aber sonst braucht sie die Aufmerksamkeit nicht. Und sie sagt, wer weiß, was sie in 15 Jahren macht. Sie könnte sich vorstellen, irgendwas außerhalb von Musik zu machen, die nützlich sein könnte. Ob sie demütig ist, weiß sie nicht, aber gerade große Künstlerlegenden respektieren ihre Mitmenschen total. Und versuchen, gute Menschen zu sein. Of course, when it comes down to the lyrics of the album, I mean, they are actually a lot about you, aren't they? I mean, mm -hmm. it, um, you don't sort of talk about many other people, really. It's not so much about your emotional turmoil. Yeah. Um, is that because you've been lucky not, not to have any so much emotional, emotional no, turmoil? Yeah. It, no, it isn't. I think that's, it's, that's exactly why it's so self-centered, because I, I was problematic and uh, not a very happy person. So that was the reason for that. And it's really funny now because I, I remember people mentioning it in the beginning and, um, and I thought, well, how do other artists write? Why aren't they writing like that? And then, you know, m the more that I write now, it's like, oh, actually, now I get it. Like, you can actually write about other people <laughs> <laughs> and about love and things like that um, in different ways. I just I don't want to be the generic love songwriter, you know. But it wasn't on purpose that I did that. I think I was I was very self-centered in that I was so depressed that I couldn't think of anything else outside of my own world. Whereas right, okay. now, I'm a pretty happy person. Okay. So what's, where's that going to take you lyrically then? Oh, into other realms. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, there's plenty, plenty of darkness left in me for the next <laughs> eight years. <laughs> so you might turn into Diamanda Gallus then after all. Oh, God, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Die Texte sind so ich bezogen, weil sie damals so unglücklich und deprimiert war. Nun hat sie begriffen, dass sie auch über andere Menschen schreiben kann. Inzwischen ist sie ein glücklicher Mensch, aber sie hat noch genügend düstere Gedanken als Stoff für die nächsten acht Jahre. Here's the outsider for Marina and the Diamonds. I remember early on reading about how it was quite, how kind of feminism was quite important to you, actually, the role you play in music and where you're going to fit in and the way you're going to present yourself. Mm. And uh, is that like a, a constant battle of wits for you really i mean how how far to go how to present yourself because yeah. i don't know how to put this right I mean, um i mean you know yourself i mean you're not you know you're not susan boyle are you obviously no uh and i mean no disrespect to susan boyle you know what i mean and <laughs> <laughs> paul <laughs> being a perfect kind feminist. old baskerville not really <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no i and yeah uh, but you know what, what i'm saying is that it's i mean there's a danger if you if you deliberately fight against 
against the way you are. Yeah. There's something untruthful about that as well. Uh, no, and absolutely. It might, kind of, it might kind of implode in yourself in a way. I think. You know what I'm saying? It's at the moment because I'm always questioning it. I do find it a constant battle and there's always conflict but it's not really of like how far to go how far not to go because i know when i feel uncomfortable um but it's more about I, well i suppose what message you want to put out whilst being true to yourself like you said because i can't hide myself in a plastic bag forever and it's it's like <laughs> i'm not i'm Jennifer not beautiful but i'm not ugly i'm i'm just you know a 24 year old girl yeah. so you have to kind of put things in context and um it's tough though <laughs> yeah okay so it's just so you just play it by ear more or less and, yeah i think yeah. you learn as you go and you kind of you kind of try and be um realistic and rational you know for example with news tea with female pop stars for example you kind of think well what's the difference to that uh to like a sculpture of of a naked female in a museum or uh then you kind of go on to the train of thought of, well, what if nudity was not allowed at all in films or in books? How would anyone know, you know, what, what normality was or, or what beauty was? And so you kind of you can't be too extreme with things. Mm. So that's what I'm learning. And I suppose I'm forming my own uh, form of feminism in which I can kind of live by. Wie sie sich in der Öffentlichkeit darstellt und wie sie sich zum Beispiel anzieht, stellt sie ständig in Frage. Sie muss sich wohlfühlen, meint Marina. Man muss sich selbst treu bleiben und sich ehrlich darstellen, wie man ist. Sie kann sich nicht in einer Mülltüte verstecken. Ich bin weder schön noch hässlich, sagt sie, sondern ich bin einfach ein 24-jähriges Mädchen. Und was ist der Unterschied zwischen einem Medienstar, der nackt fotografiert wird, und einer Skulptur einer nackten Frau in einer Kunsthalle? Über sowas denke ich nach, meint sie. Inwiefern ist Nacktheit in Spielfilmen sinnvoll und normal? Ich bin gegen extreme Attitüden, was das Thema betrifft. Und ich bin in diesem Punkt dabei, meine eigene Art vom Feminismus auszubauen, mit der ich leben kann. Thanks very much for talking to me again. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Guilty von Marina and the Diamonds, soweit das Interview mit Marina. Und ich erzählte übrigens Marina doch davon, dass Mark Linkus und Nina Persson bereits vor elf Jahren eine Popversion von Daniel Johnson's Walking the Cow gemacht haben, unter dem Namen A Camp. Und sie will sich unbedingt die Version anhören, bevor sie mit ihrer eigenen Popversion loslegt. Und wie gesagt, sie hat schon gesagt, sie will am liebsten eine Tanzversion machen. Wir hören jetzt zum Schluss A Camp mit Walking the Cow. Das war der Nachtclub mit Paul Baskerville. Ich wünsche euch eine gute Nacht.